Hey everyone, Cynix here, and if this is your first time watching one of my videos, then that's great because this video is specifically designed to be the first art video you ever watch. Whether you want to do drawing or painting or comics or whatever, I'm just going to give you a healthy mentality and philosophy that should really help start your journey. So weirdly enough, there actually won't be any art going on in this video. And you also might be wondering, why am I holding a guitar? Well, the music field is actually far more progressive than the visual arts and how it introduces beginners to its craft. So I'll be using the guitar and my lifelong experiences with it to help offer new insights on how we learn. The first topic we need to talk about is passion. Passion is the force that drives us to want to do a thing. If you click this video, you probably have some level of passion about making cool drawings or telling a visual story or whatever it might be. But passion is a resource. It can be gained and it can be lost. If you want to reach your goals, you need to respect it as a resource and start identifying the things that add to it and the things that take away from it. I view it like fuel in a gas tank. If I want to get from here to there, the only way to do it is by making sure that I don't run out of fuel. So start identifying the things that might make you more passionate about your goals and the things that maybe make you less passionate. Just be aware, these things can change over time. With that all being said, let's move around a bit. There's always a common meme among art communities. In order to do this, you need to first do this. Which, to be fair, is true, but that doesn't sum up the whole journey, because I would add that in order to do this, you also need to do this first. It sounds silly, I know, but the fact is, every single amazing artist you admire started their journey with bad fan art and stuff like this. Now, many people look back and make the mistake of assuming that this was just a wasted period of time where the artist was building bad habits but they were also maintaining something far more important than any of that, passion. All right, it's time to bring up the guitar. If a child were to express an interest in learning guitar, a teacher would have two real options. They can take the academic approach and start introducing the kid to scales and music theory. There you go, kid. Practice this until you master it, and then we'll move on to the next theory. Many reasonable children will simply run out of passion and probably just give up on this interest. Most smart music teachers would instead try to find a song that the child likes and start teaching them that. The passion will not only maintain itself, but usually even start to go up. Eventually, when your fuel tank of passion is strong enough to maintain itself, then you can start sprinkling in scales and music theory. But it drives me absolutely crazy to see children be pushed into joyless creative experiences right at the start of their journey. This of course applies to people of all ages. The fastest way to really get anywhere at the start of a creative journey is to imitate the stuff you like. My early sketchbooks when I was 19 are filled with Joan and Vasquez fan art and anime stuff, and I would have never made it any further in art if I would have done things differently. You need to find fun in what you're doing, especially at the start. Just copying cool art you see is a wonderful way to start internalizing basic information and actually gaining nice mileage on your journey. It doesn't matter what it is, and to some extent it really doesn't matter if it builds bad habits. Many guitar players never even learn music theory. They just internalize so many songs that it starts to feel almost intuitive to play certain chords in certain orders when they first try to make their own song. Eventually, like I said, the passion does become overwhelming enough that even doing fundamentals is perfectly acceptable and even enjoyable. But we need to collectively remember that it is all pointless if you don't have the passion to back it up. If passion wasn't a factor, then sure, you could craft a logical, fundamental breakdown of the steps required to become great at art. 
But why would anyone even bother at that point? It is for this reason that I will tell you the fastest and most reliable way to get good at art is to simply imitate and copy cool stuff. Which seems like a no-brainer, but for some reason people have a weird aversion to doing copies of other people's art as it feels like dirty somehow or wrong. Just make sure to not try to pass it off as your own. Once again, it's hard to even imagine the music world being as prickly as the art world when it comes to copying stuff to get better. That's dope! Did you write that? Oh no, it's just a cover. I just like this song. What? What the hell, man? That's gross. Play your own songs. Oh, sorry. Anyway, while I have this guitar out, let's make some other comparisons. Chords are an interesting parallel. Many songs have little riffs and solos and flourishes, but as a beginner, even just playing the basic chords and rhythms are enough to establish the overall song and still be quite fun. In almost every way, this is why I strongly emphasize the importance of distilling paintings down into the simplest, biggest shapes when learning to paint. My whole beginner painting video was just about this concept, and it really ties in well with how people learn instruments. There's no point in getting obsessed with the complexity of every single note when you're learning. Just focus on the big chords. That's what helps you out. So avoid getting hung up on all the small details when you first learn to do studies. If you can make the big stuff work, then you'll be in a much better spot. Okay, I have one last useful comparison to point out. Have you ever tried singing while playing an instrument? And don't worry, don't stop the video. I promise you I'm not gonna start singing. But I used to think that this was simply a multitasking skill that some people had and some people didn't. No matter how hard I tried, I found it impossible to do two different things at once. I even used an amazing word to justify my inability. I told myself that I didn't have that talent. Yes, that word, talent. It's a great defensive word. Now, years after giving up and not really bothering to try, I decided to take some time and really see if it was impossible or not. I picked a very simple chord rhythm and just kept trying to nail it down with my hands while vocalizing. Eventually, I actually managed to get my brain to detach the two from each other. The weird thing is, once I had done it once, it seemed to be easy to do it with any chords. I didn't have to brute force my brain into doing it with every song. I could just kind of do it naturally once I crossed that threshold. So something that seemed impossible now felt like it didn't even require much of a second thought. That experience really helped solidify a certain view in my mind. What I thought was talent was really just the ability to trust your own intuition. To some degree, it could also be called inherent confidence. Some people develop talent very early on in life simply because of strong positive reinforcement and healthy upbringings. But some of us don't. Just keep in mind, confidence and trust can be improved upon later in life. I know some people will fight me heavily on this, and that's fine. I do know that there are plenty of genetic factors that might make some people more inclined to do better at certain things. But I will maintain my opinion that in the creative field, I think confidence plays a much bigger part than genetics. <laughs> All right, I think that's about everything. So thank you all so much for watching. This video was long overdue, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please keep it in mind when you have like kids of your own, or if you don't already, it's good for kids. And a special thank you to all my Patreon supporters because they're keeping everything alive. So thank you everyone and see ya next time. Serious Japanese singing time.